We welcome you to Philly's Post Game Live, presented by our friends at Cure Auto Insurance, Ricky Vitalico, Michael Barkan, in a moment, Ruben Amaro Jr. from Oracle Park in San Francisco. Those streaky Phillies, last 17 games, last 17, won four, Ricky Bo, lost six, won five, and now they're streaking again the other way, two straight losses, and you thought they were going to snap out of it today. Well, I, I understand what happened in that second inning where fundamentals kind of took the Phillies and threw them for a loop. But, I mean, you're 0 for 22 with runners in scoring position in your last two baseball games. That's obscene. I mean, that's something that can't happen. You're getting the Ducks out there. you got to knock these guys in. I, the, the only one offensively who was really impressive tonight was Alec Bohm. I thought he swung the bat extremely well. You go up and down this lineup. Trey Turner, I don't know where he is. But wherever he is, show up. Because what, what I saw from Trey Turner tonight was at-bats that were quick. Every time you look up with Trey Turner, tell me you don't see 0-2 or 1-2. Mm. Every time you look. He's in a bad count. He's in a pitcher's count. That makes it hard to hit. He's swinging at bad pitches. You saw there in the ninth inning against Duvall, who can't throw strikes for the life of, life of him. I, I, th this was one of those games that just it, it, it disgusts me because you came out, you didn't play good defense. Um, you know, uh, uh, Falter gives up six, hit, six hits in an inning. The whole, the whole opener thing, please just throw that in the garbage can and throw it in the ocean. Let's never see it again because it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything for your ball club except for you wasted Connor Brogdon early in the ball game. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to keep going? No. Because this game was just ugly. Let's go out to the West Coast, check in with Ruben Amaro Jr., call tonight's game with Tom McCarthy. Ruben, your thoughts about uh, what Ricky just said with regard to the opener, the difficulty that the Phillies saw in getting runs, especially against Alex Wood, against whom they batted 326 going into tonight's game as a team. Trey Turner, in particular, 353 batting average with two home runs. But start it with the opener and your thoughts on that concept. Well, I understand why they did it. I don't like the opener. I mean, to me, I like having five solid starters, and it's hard to, in this day and age. It's hard to do. Bailey Falter been struggling. He, he actually did a really nice job for the Phillies last year, but really struggling, especially early. And we've talked about some of the numbers. His first inning numbers have just been uh, not very good at all, I mean, and and that's one of the reasons why I think Rob Thompson decided to do this is to go ahead and uh, you know give Connor Brogdon the ball at first and then and then bring Bailey Falter in. I don't like the concept. Um, I don't think it works all that often. I mean, it can if you have the right guys who are used to doing it. Um, I, I just feel like they were just trying to help uh, Falter through some some innings because he has a tough time with the with the first part of the lineup. So uh, I understand why they did it, um, but but that wasn't necessarily the reason why they, they did not win this ball game. They have not played good defense lately, and it started really with a backhand play from Trey Turner, who typically would make that play on Wilmer Flores, and then a roller into the hole by Conforto, and things kind of broke loose from there. And, uh, and, and Ricky was right. I mean, it, you, at some point, Bailey Falter has to bail those guys out and make a pitch to get out of the inning, and he just could not get it done. Ruben, you know, you look at the lineup. I, I mean, you know, one guy who's really kind of troubling me a little bit is Trey Turner. Every time, I was just talking, saying to Michael, every time you look up, it's 0-2, 1-2, and then you see him in that ninth inning swinging at a first pitch. What is going on with Trey Turner right now? Yeah, I, th I think he's just, uh, he's not real disciplined in the strike zone. He's swinging out of pitches that are out of the zone. Uh, maybe guessing a little bit too much. Perhaps he's pressing a little. I actually talked to him before the game today, and uh, I, said, you know, I asked him how he was doing. He said, I, I'd be doing great if I was playing a little bit better. Um, so he understands it. You know, I, I think that he feels like uh, maybe he's, he's not doing enough. And listen, I, I get it. When, uh, when, when you come into a new environment, I think he feels comfortable. He's just, right now, he's just swinging at a lot of pitches that are out of the zone. And, and I think I said it during the broadcast, sometimes less is more to calm down, let the game come to you a little bit. Uh, because it looks like he's getting a little over aggressive uh, on pitches that are out of the zone, and it's just a tough way to hit if you're not swinging at strikes. Ruben, uh, you and Tommy showed this uh, graphic at the at the top of the program, and I'm just going to tell you uh, what it meant. It was, uh, or, or actually, what it said, and it talked about the difficulty and the compa compared the Phillies at the beginning of this season and the beginning of last season, and the numbers were 
similar. We know what happened last season. Do you have any reason to believe the same thing's going to happen to this season and they're going to break out of this? Well, I mean, obviously, uh, Kyle Schwarber has those amazing Junes. And Trey Turner really does have slow starts to his seasons uh, historically. So I, I fully believe that, uh, that these guys are going to start swinging the bats much better and, and doing a lot more damage. There's no question in my mind that that is going to happen. They have Bryce Harper now on their, on their club. They, they, you know, listen, they, they're, they're missing Reese Hoskins. And the fact that he uh, provided a lot of offense for him, very streaky player, but he also provided a lot of offense for him. Uh, but I do believe that uh, with, with Trey Turner turning things around, which I know will happen at some point, um, and Kyle Schwarber starting to do the things that he did through June all the way to the end of the season, I think you're going to have some quality at bats and some, some big offensive numbers to me it's about that starting pitching if it continues to you know give you a chance every single night uh, i'm always about the pitching and if the pitching can uh, can stabilize and and uh, and these guys can can you know continue to throw the ball well as starters um, i really like the way the bullpen's thrown so uh, i i think they're not hitting on all cylinders right now and i don't like the fact that they're not playing great defense which is a concern of mine um, because it's it, it should be a little bit better defensive team. Uh, but I think it was a little bit of the defense that let him down today, too. All right, Ruben, thanks so much. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Ruben Amaro, Jr. in San Francisco with the Phil's call tonight's game with Tom McCarthy. As we continue, we'll take a quick timeout. We come back, we'll hear from Rob Thompson on tonight's game, tonight's loss, and his thoughts about tomorrow as Zach Wheeler takes the mound for the Phillies. As the Phillies, unfortunately, are streaking down again. Here's Rob Thompson post game. Second inning, sunk you. Yeah. Of course. Um, I think Sosa could have turned two on there. Look at it. He took a little step back on that. Yeah, that it took ball. him a while to get it out of his glove. But um, really, the key was the, the force out at second base. Mm -hmm. You know, Stoddard's been playing so well, it just popped out of his glove. And so we don't give up, you know, we give up no earned runs. You know, we give up six, but none of them are earned, so. How, how uh, I mean, he hadn't made an error in second base. Yeah. You know, so is it kind of stunning to sort of see? I mean, you know he's, he's human, but yeah, he's, to see he's, him drop it. Yeah, he's played great. And it's just one of those plays that just popped out of his glove. What did you think of Falter in general? I mean, you know, did give up some hits in that inning, even though, you know, the runs were unearned. Yeah, and, and, and some hard hits, too. Um, just to, I don't think he was executing that inning, but then, you know, credit to him, he he, he settled in and, and gave us a, lo a little bit of length and didn't give up another run and kind of kept us right there. So, and and we had some opportunities, um, but again, we didn't we didn't come through uh, with runners in scoring position. So and that happens, but um, but Falter and and I, I thought Brogdon threw the ball well. You know, he gave up two ground ball base hits through the hole. Uh, he walked a guy, but I thought he threw the ball well. I thought Bilotti was good, and Hoffman was just outstanding. It was really good to see. So the plan for Brogdon was what? How far did you, you know, perfect world, what do you get him to? Well, it was pitch count at that point. So that, I think he so was 25 or 27 pitches he threw in the game, and, and we just we want to make sure that we give him every chance to be available tomorrow. Right. But, I mean, coming into the game, you were hoping to maybe get him through two, or...? No, not necessarily. Okay, I think we wanted to, if we could, give Bailey the clean inning to start. You know, right. so if that's the second, then that was good with us. Even if it was on Davis, um, or who was his next guy, or Hanniger, we were good with him starting the inning. You just want him there on the lefty in the first inning. Yeah, and that was that was the only thing that would get him into the first inning is if Brogdon got to Crawford and was that kind of his pitch count, then we'd, we'd have to go to Bailey. And he did the job there. So you, tr you tried a couple things to get Bailey going. You pushed him back to see if the velo was up. It seemed like it was about the same. Yeah. And then um, opener for the first thing. What do you tell him or what do you make of just his season so far? Uh, you know, just his own seven, you know, the ERA yeah. is up there. Yeah, he's, he's you know, he's, there were times when he was walking people, which was uncharacteristic. Now he's not walking people, but Unfortunately, he's not executing pitches, and that's really the, the key. And again, I, I know we've asked this before, but is, do you see him making his next start? Where does he stand right uh, now? We haven't talked about anything yet. Rob Thompson regarding Bailey Falter. 
non-committal to say the least about any potential next start for Bailey Falter. 